In a recent Space Engineers live stream, my base's lone wind turbine decided to call it quits. And this kind of got me thinking that it's about time I revisit and look at the power systems that we could be using early game and kind of what best fits for my use case in my live stream, the Triton transfer. Now, in this video, we're going to kind of dive into some of these power systems. And I'm going to, at the end, kind of tell you what ultimately I'm going to kind of settle in on. The first block, power block that we are going to be looking at is our wind turbine. Now, wind turbines work by converting wind to electricity. And in space engineers, they do the exact same thing. And they work really well in atmosphere, kind of for some obvious reasons here. Now, wind turbines take up a decent amount of space. Each wind turbine takes up about a three by three by three area. However, the height based off the height from the voxel plays a huge role into kind of like the amount of power that a wind turbine can generate. Let's take a quick look here. So I have a wind turbine here that is sitting one block off the voxel and it's generating about 182 kilowatts. If I go over here to this wind turbine that's sitting about four blocks off, you can see that it's now it's now generating 235 kilowatts. Now, lastly, if I go to this one, which is at the optimal height of nine blocks high, we're generating a whole 416 kilowatts. Well, 17 if we count the decimals, but either way, the higher up off the ground that these wind turbines can get, the more efficient they are going to be at generating power. Speaking of efficiency, there are two other things that we do need to note on wind turbines, and that is one, air density plays a huge, or atmosphere density plays a huge role in how much power they're going to generate. A wind turbine is going to generate more power at sea level, or in this case, on this ice lake than it would on top of a mountain. And secondly, if let's say I take this armor block and let's say we're at 182 right now and I place out one, two, three, four, I grab another wind turbine. And let's say I was to place it right as close to this guy as possible. I'm now generating 339 kilowatts, which is less than the 180 some kilowatts per wind turbine. And that's because wind turbines, they don't like to be crowded. They prefer like they just like they prefer their space from the ground. They also like their space between themselves and other blocks. So this is kind of a thing about laying out these wind turbines to kind of keep note of. The last thing to note about these wind turbines is they are stationary only. Uh, you cannot add a wind turbine to a mobile ship grid. And if you do, you have to do some weird shenanigans with anchoring your vehicle to the ground, making sure your, your velocity is at zero. Any sort of movement will, they will just stop generating power. So let's kind of take a look at our, one of our other options. The next block power block we are going to be talking about is the solar panels. Now, solar panels, just like in real life, they convert energy from the sun to electrical energy. And I'm not going to get into the process on how they do this. Just note in the game, it works the exact same way. Now, solar panels, they are great for places that get a lot of sun, such as out in space, in a nice area where you're not really butt up against mountains or just a place that has like a lot of access to sunlight throughout the day. 
Another thing to kind of note is if we look at these, and this is going to be for all solar panels, even the older solar panels, is all of the solar panels are double-sided, which means if you have a stationary solar panel, you could, in essence, set it up so one half of the panel gets a lot of morning sun, while the second half of the panel gets a lot of afternoon sun. You know, kind of maximizing the amount of sunlight this one panel is getting. Now, something to also note on solar panels is if we look over here, we can see at maximum efficiency for the solar panels, we're only generating about 134 kilowatts. That's going to be far less than what our maximum efficiency wind turbine will generate. So you're going to need more panels to get the same amount if not more energy than you would just using wind turbines. However, something that you can do with solar panels that you can't do with turbines is that you can put solar panels on mobile grids and they can work excellent as power sources for drones, for satellites, communication relays, Anything that moves, the solar panel will just passively charge if it's in sunlight. So it's kind of a you know nice little uh, trade-off. It makes less power, but you can use them while on the go. Something that we do kind of need to talk about that affects both solar panels and wind turbines is weather. Weather will affect both of these power sources. Uh, for example, a storm will speed up the rate at which the wind turbines spin, which means wind turbines are generating more power. However, they typically do block out the sun. Now, in heavy fog, on the other hand, both wind turbines and solar panels, they, they just don't like it. Neither one of them are able to efficiently generate power during fog. Moving away from our unlimited power sources or renewable power sources, we're going to take a look at our fuel consuming power source, and that is the hydrogen engine. Now, when it comes to power creating blocks uh, in space engineers, the hydrogen engine packs a pretty mean punch. It generates a whole five megawatts of power, and the only trade off is that you are using hydrogen as you are operating the engine. And on top of that, the hydrogen engines don't necessarily work by themselves. They need something to start them, such as a battery, a wind turbine, something already on the grid generating power. As a trade-off for that is hydrogen engines will idle down to the point where in this example we have here, we can look, my hydrogen engine isn't using in creating any power, which means it's not using any fuel. And to kind of sit here and show this, cause I'm am and kind of creative, I'm going to get rid of my H2O2 generator. And as we can see, we're still not burning any fuel not but as soon as i get rid of the solar panel we can see now that our we now see that our hydrogen engine now has a load because hydrogen engines will stay idle until they are needed to generate power now even further if i go into this menu and i turn on the refinery over here we can now see that it's now under enough load that it is now drawing fuel. But as soon as that load is done, as soon as it no longer needs it, hydrogen engine will go right back down to standby mode. And eventually, if we get more power going into the grid, won't even pull any energy at, or any fuel at all. So they make great systems to use where you have a lot of fluctuating power uh, needs 
or when you have burst moments of heavy load on your grids. Now, we're going to sit here and talk about our last power block, which isn't necessarily a power generating block, but I feel it's rather important to early game and even some late game power systems. And that last block that we're going to look at today is the batteries. Now, batteries, they don't generate any power at all. As a matter of fact, all they do is store power, which makes them great for vehicles, for emergency uses, or if you are relying a lot on solar panels, it allows you to have power during the nighttime. Now, something to note is that while they do not create their own power, when you build a fresh battery, they do start with a charge. I think it's somewhere around 30%. So if you need a quick jump of power to like jump a vehicle because you accidentally left it on and it died and the hydrogen engine won't kick on because you didn't put any batteries on it, well, that's what you would do. You'd build a small enough battery, just enough to get it going, and as soon as it's able to go, you're good. Now that we've looked at kind of all four of these different power blocks, it we have to ask the important question, what is the best power block starting off? And the truth of it, none of them really are, because the best power system requires multiple different systems. You're going to need something to primarily generate a lot of power. You're going to need something to handle the peaks and the emergency loads. And you're going to need something that you can just run without the use, uh, the input of any power. Any power system is going to have backups. They're going to have redundant systems. And you're going to want to use a mix to ultimately get the best power system. So what am I going to be using for my live stream? Well, after looking at things, the mountain I'm on gets a lot of sunlight. So I'm going to build a solar farm with some secondary wind turbines just in case to help lighten the load during the nighttime. How I am going to build the solar farms is I'm going to be building some sun tracking solar panels, which are super easy to make and they don't require a lot of materials. So make sure you're subscribed because I will more than likely be filming that video next. So you don't want to miss out on that video when that drops. That being said, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like me, go ahead and subscribe. And if you want to keep up with my latest videos, don't forget to turn on notifications. I'm the Kilted Bastard. Have a great rest of your day.